and welcome to Great Minds Tutorials. This is your favorite tutor, Khadiso. And in this uh, new video, I'm going to be doing a simple exercise as per request. One of our subscribers has asked me to do this couple of questions. And uh, one of the questions is that create a contract uh, concrete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, ho, ah, hey. English will, will deal with us, but yeah, we'll get there. Create a concrete class called uh, Steers Ice Cream. That represents an ice cream. And uh, it says you can buy STS ice cream following the UML diagram. So this is what we call a UML diagram. This is a design for whenever you're working with your concrete classes. So what is a concrete class? A, class, a concrete class is a class in a back end, and that class can stand alone. It's got its own private fields, and it's got its own uh, methods, which is your mutator, accessor methods, and also your constructors. So now, looking at this, this is always this it's, it's divided into three parts a uml diagram is always divided into three parts does this first part appear and that first part that is where the name and the packaging is found so in this case they do not have a specific packaging for it but we'll figure out the packaging whenever we get there so they only specified the name so it means the name of the class must be this one it must be called steers ice cream uh that is what the class must be called so now we what we're gonna do we're gonna take this and copy then we're gonna go to netbeans and when you get here you're gonna go to new java project and uh when you get here you can say next and we're going to paste that, but you do not have to write it as the same name as your backend class. You need to write it as an application because why this is the main class. Why? Because it's going to create a main class. So it's going to have a main method. This is where you're going to test your code that is working. And this is where you're going to run it from the side which you're going to run it from. So when you're working in development, you'll realize that there is something called backend classes and front end classes. So this is what we call a front end class. So when you say finish, it's going to create the application, uh, the project based on that name, which is Kia's ice cream app. And uh, let me just quickly do this. Okay, yeah, now it's done. And now when you get here, what we'll do then we start constructing the uh, specific class. So you come here, you right click there, you right click and say new, and then you will say new Java class, and then you'll give it that name, the one that is specific. So when it gets here, if you're working for steers, usually what we do is that we use the name of the um, uh, anything, whatever institute you're in, you're working in. If you're working for Google, you're going to say com.google and so on. But in this case, let's say we're working for steers, we're going to say com.steers. Uh, steers.ww. W. That is your packaging. So that is where it's going to be saved under. But most of the time, they might want you to save it under a default package, and uh, which is still fine. Uh, but uh, in this case, let's give it that. And for us to have proper part. So now it's going to be placed under com.steers.ww. So it's just www.steers.com written in the opposite direction. So, okay, now once you have that, now we're gonna go back to the UML diagram. Then I'm gonna show you what is what. Is what. So when you see a negative here yeah, in the UML diagram, let me zoom in, let me zoom in so that you can see. Uh, so when you see a negative, that is a private. When you see a positive, that is a public. It represents a, 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 a public. So in the second part of your UML diagram, this is where you are having your uh, private fields. This is where you are having your private fields. So always remember about that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this because I want to remember what are we dealing with here. So, okay, once I have it like that, then I'm going to do the private first. Don't worry about whatever is up here. I just want to reference. I don't want to go quick, go back and forth. So it's a private, as you can see, it's negative. And then the data type is a char, and then it's called a holder. And then the second one is a private. Uh, we are having a char. And then it's a size. And then the third one, it's a private, and we're having a flake. Ah, uh, no, 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 it's a Boolean. Uh, we'll specify if they want flake. 
plague. And then we are also having a private year as uh, a char. It's uh, called Deep Source. So bear in mind, as it is given, you must write it the way it is. So this strategy is not necessary for you to do it. I just wanted to reference, but this is how you do it. This is how you translate this part. It's private char holder, private char size, private boolean flake, private char dipstick, and so on and so on, just like that. So now coming back here, you'll realize that now we are done with our private fields. So this is what we call our private field. And the other name for it is all oh, it can be called attributes. So what are this? These are behaviors. What is a behavior? Is that every object that you're gonna create, an ice cream must have specify that does it have a, what 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 kind of a holder is it using? Specify the size. Sorry about that. This is flu season. Um it must change of season. Uh, so it must also specify whether <laughs> the user wants a flake. And it must also specify if they want a dip source. And so on. So those are the characteristics. So it's going to tell you different types of ice creams. It's going to tell you this ice cream must have that kind of a holder, that ice cream, and so forth and so forth. So now we are having constructors here. So I'm going to show you a shortcut, a constructor. But the way you write it is you say public, and then you write the name of the class, which is tears ice cream. And then once you have it like that, then you go and check back in the UML diagram. This is a default constructor. Why is it default? It doesn't have any parameter inside. That's what we call a default constructor. So now there is what we call a parameterized constructor. But this one has got two parameters. The third one has got three for four parameters to, uh, to be specific. And uh, as you can see, the first one has got one parameter. This one has got two parameters, but they're using the same name. So it's just an application of what we're calling uh, method overloading. Yeah? So, but you need to go to the description and check which parameter has been put inside there. So as I was mentioning that this is a default constructor. Yeah? So then it says there that it will initialize the data members to the following values for uh, the standard ice cream cones is C, and that is the, um, and uh, it's the general size and flake is false, and a dip source, it must be an and. So it means the default constructor must do this. It must specifically do this. It must uh, initialize cone to a C, and it must initialize the size to G, and then it must initialize flake to false and it must initialize deep source to n which is no so and then what you need to do is that you need to then come this side what you do is that you use the this method you say this dot you say a holder so as you saw that side it says that the holder uh what did it say for a holder oh okay that i think that is the cone so it says for holder, it must be a C for cone. And this dot uh, size, it must be a G for general size. And this dot, let's check the other ones. Yeah, for size, it must be a G. For flake, it must be a false. And for deep source, it must be an N for a no. So this dot flake is assigned to a false, meaning that there's no flake that has been ordered. And uh, for the deep source, it must be an N for no. False, yeah? So, okay, what does a default constructor do? A default constructor, it will always reset to default as 
as as as you are reading from it, it will it will reset to default. So when it resets to default, what is happening is that it will reset the holder to cone, meaning that by by default it must be a cone. It must the, the size must be general. Flake must not be added, and no deep source must be added. That is a standard standard ice cream. So we're gonna use that for the standard ice cream. So for the parameterized constructors. So I'm gonna do this series in two parts, if not one part. Okay, let me just do it in one part, then it'll be fine. Uh, so, okay, now what we need, we need to go back and check the other parameterized constructor. So the first parameterized constructor is this one, scares ice cream chalk. So it says now the parameterized uh, overloaded constructor. So as we are speaking about method overloading, here is it. Okay. I, I wanted to highlight this. Technology played with me. Uh, let me highlight it like that. Okay. Constructor will initialize the size data member. So that is the only thing that it takes inside here. So it means that inside here, it takes in a size. And by default, the holder of the ice cream cone is a C. And it means that the flake, it also remains as false. And the deep source must be an N. So you go back. You must follow everything that they say. So you say public also. But let me show you a quick way you can do this. You can right click. And the first one I showed you, this one. This one I showed you how to tap it out normally. I'm going to show you a quick way. You right click. You go to insert code. You go to constructor. And you check which one are we dealing with. We are dealing with size. That's the member that we are supposed to be dealing with. So now I'm going to click on size. Then I'm going to generate. You will see it is going to take in a size and then it's going to do that. But according to the question, the holder, the flake, the holder, the flake, and the, and the deep source, Okay, let me start with this one. Copy. Then I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm going to take this two. Copy. And paste it where? Yeah. That is what it says it must do. It says that by default, the same current constructor, by default, the holder must be C for cone and no flake because it's a false. And deep source, no, it's represented by an N. So if you come back here, you will see that is what we are doing. It's cone, false, and N. Then we move on. The next constructor, we come back here. We check. Uh, let me scroll down a little bit. So it says the skiers ice cream, it takes in two, which is a char and a char. But let's check what does it take. It takes in a size and a holder and the rest of the other uh, data members which is your flake it will remain false and a deep source will be an n so when you get here it's the same store right click insert code constructor then in this case it says it must include a size and a holder you generate let net beans do the job for you then once you have it but look when you want to do it manually, it's like you're typing public and then the name of the class. And then inside there, you put in the data member that they say that it must work with. So when you say this dot, that data member, then you assign it to this parameter that you're passing to the constructor. So and then now in this case, it tells you that the flake and the dip source must remain as standard as that. I'm just going to copy that and paste it here. We move on. You see, now we are scoring the marks. If this is for a test, then you're scoring for marks because it looks like it's for a practice. Uh, okay, now what happens here is this key is ice cream. And then, uh, okay, we are done with this one. We are done. We are done with this one. We are done with that one. Then we are doing the last constructor, which is this one. 
uh, they're supposed to be three constructors. So this one, it takes in a chore, it takes in a chore, it takes in a bully, and it takes in a chore. I think this one, it takes in everything. Yeah? And then it says it will initialize everything. The overloaded parameterized constructor will uh, initialize the size, data, member as the first parameter, and then the holder as the second parameter, and so on and so on and so on. Make sure that order is also followed. Yeah? You must see a char, a char, a boolean, and a char. If it doesn't okay like that, it means you are not working based on the design. So you right click, you come here, constructor. This one includes everything, which is a char, char, boolean, and a char, as it's in that order. So you'll see, here we have it, it's a char, char, boolean, and a char. And then we are done with those constructors. So now we need to start working with what we call getters methods and setters methods. This is very important. Uh, let's start with the getters methods. And then when you come here, you will see, okay, but yeah, it starts with the setters method, but it's fine. Let's start with the getters method. Uh, but okay, let us follow. Remember, I was preaching. I must practice what I preach. I was preaching that you must follow the same order. So I'm going to do this. Uh, let, let it be setters methods. And then now for setters methods, it's when you are saying public, to set something, it must be void. I'm going to start with the first one. So what do we want to set? We want to set, according to this, we need to set the holder. So here is it. So we will want to set the holder, which is here. And you will see, if you go back up here, it will show you that a setters method is supposed to be void. So the returning type here is it. It's void here. So I'm not wrong to say void here. So we're going to set what? Holder. So check. Yeah, you always write the name of the data member. So it's set holder, set size, set flake, set deep source. That, those are the four that you're going to need. If you have more than four uh, such as methods, you are doing something completely wrong. As you can go back here, you'll see we're having four. Set holder, set size, set flake, set deep source. You see? It follows what the names of your fields, holder, size, flake, and deep source. Very simple like that. So now I'm going to do the first one manually for those who prefer to do it manually. And then when you get here, when you are setting, you must give it uh, a char holder. That is the parameter that you're supposed to give it inside. And when you open, what you're just doing is that you're just saying this dot holder is assigned to the holder, the one that you're having as a parameter here. This parameter is going to be assigned to the data member, which is holder. And now I'm going to show you how you can do it without coding. You say insert code. Get us. No, 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 no. Set us. Um, I'm, 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 I'm always ahead of myself. Okay, let's set us. And then it says it must do one for deep source, one for flake, and one for size. Then we generate. And then there we have it. Set size, set flake, set deep source. So there's no need for you to code them. You can just use NetBeans in order for it to generate it for the, 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 uh, them for you automatically. So now, Let's do the getters according to the, so now you need to do the yeah, 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 yeah. So, wah, getters methods. Okay. Now, when you get here, you will see that for the getters methods. Okay. Let me just tick here. For the getters methods is get holder. Again, get holder, get size, get flake, get deep source, get, and now this one, it must return that specific data type. So, but it's, 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 it's public. And then now the data type that we want to return is a char. So now it's get holder. And it doesn't have any parameter inside. And what this is supposed to do, it's just supposed to return. And then it just needs to return holder. There we go. 
So that is just going to return that. So, but I'm going to do it. Insert code, getters. For the rest, you just come here, click select all, you generate. Ah, uh, okay, but this is not standard for you to say this dot. You don't, there's no need for you to reference it. Even if you just remove this, it's fine, but it's still breaking around the same thing. But let us do it the proper way that we're supposed to be doing it. So, okay, now you just return a holder without this. But even if you put it there, it's not going to give you any error of some sort and all of that. Okay, but it's fine. Then once you have that, you're just returning. And now we are done up until here. We are almost here. We are almost done with all of this. And from this part going down, you can do it without even writing a single code. As long as you've written this, but you'll see as I'm working through the 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 examples, what am, am I actually doing? So now we need to come here to the price. So the price, it says that this method is used to calculate and return the price of an ice cream uh, considering the different options available. Now, let's come back here. So when you come back here, you can see it returns a double and it's a public. So we need to go and construct it. So this is a method. It's an it's, it's it's a method. So your methods, no. So for your methods, you are having a public. We saw a positive there. Remember, I said that on a UML diagram, a positive sign is private. A public, I mean, sorry about that. A positive sign is public, and a negative sign means private. So you saw a positive sign that is a public. So it returns a double. And then we're going to call it price. And then this just has to return the price. But does it take any parameter? No, doesn't take any parameter. As you have in it, doesn't take in any parameter inside. And then now we need to go to the description. We need to follow the description. So the description says that now the sizes of an ice cream is either G, M, or I. And the cone holder is either C or that. And then it's going to add. And all also also so that. So when you look at this, if you see multiple application in a question, already think about if statements. Why? Because it means there's multiple stuff that needs to be selected. So it's what we call we'll be talking about. We're saying selection control structures. We need to select one one thing which is the size. We will need to select one thing which is the holder. And we will need to select one thing which is the flake. And we will need to select one thing which is that, the deep source. So now you will need an if statement inside there. You will say if the holder, the holder we are already having it, we can just highlight it like that, is equals to, it's written there, G, Then if the holder is equal to G, how much are we charging for the price? So and then we must have a variable called price, the one that we're going to return, because why we need to return it here. So price must be assigned to a zero. At the moment, price is just zero, zero. So, if price is dead, then price is going to be equivalent to price plus, then we add whatever that we need to add, which is five round 50. So it's five round 50 must be added. If the user has selected that the holder is general, then the price is going to be five round 50. Then we need to have an else if. So why? Because this if statement goes with that one. So if the holder, is equals to M for medium. Then the price will change to something else. Let's do the last one. I'll come back and change the price. Else if the holder is equivalent to large. Ah. 
Bloom Bobby. That translated to English, it means hey. <laughs> it means um uh, yeah, bite him. <laughs> bite him, Bobby. Yeah, but Bobby is a dog. So we usually use that expression whenever we are seeing flames in my local language, the one that I speak. <laughs> so, okay. Um, now, 7.56? Oh, no, 7.65. So, and then we're going to say price. We copy this. Aha! Ziakala. That's another one. Ziakala means it's going down. 7. 65. At least here you are not learning only programming. You will also learn our local languages in South Africa. Uh, 10.45. Okay. All right. Now we have made it. So now it means now what it will do for the whole day, it will check if whether it's a G an M or so forth, and then it will add that. Then this one is going to be for the price. Uh, for the holder section. So this is for the holder section. So then we need one for oh no 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 this is for the size. Sorry about that. Uh, this is for the size. I've been mixing them up. Sorry about that. It happens. Programming, guys. It happens. Programming. This must be size. Sorry about that. It happens. Programming. Programming is like that. But if you're not awake, 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 you will start seeing flames. Uh, like I am seeing flames now. And for the, 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 uh, hence, hey, it's good that I was trying to comment up there that this is for the holder section. So now we need to have if statements for the holders. Now we're going to say if the holder is equals to so we're going to have it for both a cone and also for a cup. So, and then we must have a small letter C for a cone and a capital letter C for a cup. So, and then we're going to have two if statement. We're going to say if this is small letter C, that will be a cone. Then you must, that if statement must go with an else if. Why? Because there is an else side of it. So, else we're saying that if the holder is then capital letter. Uh, now we are, we, we are cruising. We are cruising, and uh, when we are cruising like this, uh, so this, it's always accumulating. So price is always going to accumulate when you do that. But there is shorthand notation for this. There's no need for you to write price, what, what. You can just say plus. Be fancy with it like that. Those who know will know. Uh, if you know, you'll know. That is still the same as you writing price is equal to price, what, what. So, but let me not confuse a lot of people. Let me just say price like that. Let's keep it standard. So, now for the small cone, we need to check how much is being added. 125. We're going to copy that. The other one is 275. Paste. Then, we're going to copy this. And then, we're going to post it here. And then, this should be 275. So, and then we must have a section where we're going to deal with flake. Flake section. And for the flake section, there's no need for you to, to specify. Oh, oh, oh but let, let's check something. It says, add to run if the user wants a flake. And uh, another... 125, 175 if the user chooses a deep source. So for the price, 
Okay, so now we need to be creative here. What can we do in order for us to make sure that we we get the fact that the user wants a flake and so forth? So, okay, let's see. Okay, we're going to get it like this. We're going to say... All right, I think I've figured it out. So now we're going to say if flake is not equals to false. If flake is not equal to false, we're going to say price. Because remember, up here, we say that if they do not want a flake, it will be a false. Meaning that flake, false. They don't want a flake on their ice cream. They prefer their ice cream standard like that. So now, hence, we're seeing that if flake is not equal to false, meaning that it's going to check the value which is stored for flake. If it finds out that it's, a, it's, it's not a false, the opposite of a false will be a true. No? So in another way, if you want to say it's not equal to a false, you can just say it's equal to a true. That will still work. It's, it's the same statement. Then if flake is a true, then it must add to rent. Copy. It must add a two rand here. You see? So, again, the last one, this is for deep source section. So, for the deep source, we're going to say if flake, oh, hey, hey. If deep source, okay, one E. Is then equals to n for no, but let's make it not, meaning that if it's a yes, then it's gonna add. It's gonna say price. Oh, we can have the y itself. We can have y for yes. Because why up here we say that if they do not want that, they'll put in a no. N means it's no. And why it should be the opposite, it should be a yes. So we're saying if they want, then price will be added by what? As yet, it specifies that if they choose a deep source, then it should be added here. And there we go. After that, when we are done with all those if statements going through them, we need to return. Price. Simple as that. So, okay. Let me finish this. I'm going to record another video, which is going to continue. But that side, we're going to go to the main, which is this side. Everything that we're supposed to do in the main. Make sure you watch the next exercise. But I'll specify which exercise it's going to be. And I'll link both of the... Yeah, so the next episode exercise, which is going to be uploaded after this one, that is the one that is going to include the main class. I'm just going to do the last one here so that we cut on the time. So, okay, now, here it says that you must have another one, which is called details. So then, but we need to check. Okay, this method will return uh concatenated string i always like using this concat concat is my favorite with the details of the ice cream object so it says here 
that it must, including or stating the price. So deep source, the choice for deep source must be N for no deep source, C for chocolate, and C for caramel. So, okay, now we have, it says here that there's no C or cap C. So I've realized something that we were doing here. Here we are saying Y, and this is not really accurate. According to that, it says small C for caramel. And then you use this, which means R, and it's represented like uh, this. In programming so oh it means one of them can hold capital letter c so it means if they chose that they want capital letter c or small letter c caramel or chocolate then it's gonna add that then we will be accurate so yeah we need to do the last one which is going to be public And then it must return a string. Details. And then here, yeah, we're gonna do a, a string disp. I always do this. Or let's call it info. Then we're going to assign it to an empty string. And then here it says that it must return details of the ice cream object. And stating the price. Okay. So now. We're going to say info. But we're going to need if statements. Obviously. So, but this should repeat more or less the same as whatever is happening up here. Okay, but let's go up here. I want to see what data type. Okay, but it's not taking any parameter in there. Okay, including stating the price. So, okay, this one is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, give me a minute to think about it. Okay, the reason why I'm saying it's going to be tricky is because now you see price has been returned this side and price has not been declared globally up there. as any of these parameters here. So it means price is not held globally. Price is only returned here and it's gonna be returned to the main. Unless if when we get here, we say 
double price. Then this way it will work out. Okay. Now, but according to this diagram, there is no price which has been passed here in any way. But we are going to need it because part of the question it says that it must also state the price. So here it says that the deep source can either be an N, a C, or a capital letter C. So to save time, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be taking this, which is up here. Because it follows the same pattern. Paste here. So when we get here, we say if it's G, then what we are saying is that info, it's info dot concat, as it says that it requires the concatenated. We're going to say the size is a general size. Then we go to a new line. If it's medium, we copy this. And we also put this for large. The size is a medium size. The size is a large size. Yeah, it needs to be info. So for the holders, if it's a cone, we're going to paste here. We don't have to specify the cone. So the holder selected. Cone. Holder. Is a cup holder. So a flake, if a flake is true, then we're going to say that a flake was added. And then for deep source, now we need to separate them here. We need to have one if statement. No, wrong bracket, this one. Then it's going to specify for concatenate and says that uh, no deep source. was chosen okay so that is in the case when it's an n then we must have an else if here yeah, we must say when deep source that will be for uh, caramel if i'm not mistaken let's check here yeah. It says that that is for oh, it's for chocolate, not caramel. Caramel is the capital letter C. So, yeah. We're going to say that the chocolate deep sauce was selected. And then we are having another else if deep source capital letter C 
Then this one is gonna be caramel. Uh, let's copy this. Put it here. Okay. Caramel. Yeah, that one is for caramel. Then that should also retain at the end of all of that it must also concat the price. It must then say info dot info uh, info is assigned to info dot concat the price Or let's say the total price the total price of the ice cream uh, is R and then we concur uh, price and then immediately it will add whether caramel was selected excuse and all of that and then it will just retain here yeah? price uh, info yo, yo, yo. it returns the concatenated string so that should be fine we can even still include the prices we can say for how much it was? We can see five hundred fifty. For seven hundred sixty-five. For ten hundred forty-five. So we can be able to calculate from that. The holder is 125, 275. The cone is 4, 125, 4, 275. You see, now I'm adding even the prices. So no flake was added. So yeah, we need to have an else, something that I've missed out. What if the user has selected a flake? What if a user didn't select, I mean, what if the user didn't select a flake? Then we're gonna say no flake was added. A flake was added for how much? Two rents. So the deep sources, whatever deep source it is, it's gonna be one hundred seventy-five. R. 175 and we have it is just going to write the total price after calc because that is going to be coming from the main class it's going to be returned from the main class and there you have it this is how you create your concurrent um, class based on that document and uh, what is required from that document and in the next episode i'm gonna be dealing with the main class just to cut short the uh, i need to think about my editing and all of those kind of stuff but i'm gonna do another exercise which is gonna be a continuation in this one and that is it from me for today it's your favorite tutor Hodiso. 
And stay tuned for more exercises like this ones, which are going to we're going to move around and 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 get our end and and get our hands dirty, and uh, work on bigger projects and uh and yeah uh to more episodes and uh, till we drop the next one, please remember to like, share, and subscribe and comment below on what you want us to you would like us to to do on this channel. Like this one, it was also a request, and I'm um, responded to the request, and I'm bringing it out there. And cheers, that is it for me. Till the next drop.